Hello everyone, it's Ryan at Dark Winter Moon in Boston, and it felt like a Say Something hat day. Um, and also I have COVID hair, so that's a good way to cover it up. <laughs> so uh, today I wanted to talk to you about uh, my experiences at the Temple uh, of Apollo and Delphi and what led me there. Um, and so I'm going to read a few excerpts from my journal and kind of tell you in my own words uh, how it happened and what happened. Um, so here we go. A few years ago, I found myself very frustrated and unfulfilled in a corporate career that I thought was going to take me to the top of the corporate ladder. For months, I had felt like I had hit a wall and wasn't moving. And it wasn't just my job that left me wanting, it was pretty much my entire life. So in desperation, I called out to the gods and I pleaded with the Lord and the Lady and Apollo and all the powers that be to help me find uh, a way out of this situation in my life. I felt lost, afraid, depressed, and stunted in my growth in all areas of my life and I begged them to help me find a way out. Then a couple of weeks before Yule of 2013, I got a call from my doctor informing me that I was HIV positive. Of course, this news was devastating, and looking back, I also realized that it was exactly what I asked for. My diagnosis turned out to be one of the best things that's ever happened to me. It forced me to change my life in ways that wouldn't have been possible otherwise. I became closer to my family and friends. I valued them more. My relationship with my deities deepened and expanded and I decided to take leave from my job and take my retirement and use it to go on a walkabout so that I could find myself. So I bought a one-way ticket to Ireland, packed my bags, and went on an indefinite sojourn in Europe. So today I wanted to share with you all my experiences with Apollo in Greece. I have included journal excerpts from my time there. They are not in chronological order, as some things only became clear to me in retrospect. So the first entry, 10-8-2014. Randomly and last minute, I decided to go to Istanbul from Geneva. I was in the process of reading Dan Brown's Inferno, which I had purchased in Milan just before boarding the train in Geneva. I reached Istanbul. My second day, I decided to see Hagia Sophia. That evening, as I was reading Inferno in my hostel, the plot took a twist. When before the book was taking place in Italy, Suddenly, the action moved to Istanbul, to Hagia Sophia. I was agog. Suddenly, I was reading about the very place I had just visited that day. The book led the characters through several other notable places near there. It also mentioned the Serpent Column. Within the square between Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque, there is a spiral bronze column taken from the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. I couldn't fucking believe it. I knew at that moment that I had to go to Delphi. Coincidence is one thing, synchronicity is another. When events pile up in a straight line and conspire to bring one from one place to another, when all the things I have experienced line up to bring me to one pivotal moment itself with its own synchronicities, then there really is no question to me as to the validity of my experience. So up until that point, I guess in my subconscious, I had known that I wanted to go to Greece or that I would lead there. It seemed logical, considering that I follow Apollo, that maybe I should go and visit his temple. But for some reason, like, I was resisting going. And I kept putting it off. Um, so it literally ended up being the last country I went to. Um, Greece did. So it... <sighs> I don't, I don't even really know why I was resisting. I, I think it seemed to me from the outside as if it was too obvious. Um, but yeah, I couldn't deny it any longer when I was in Istanbul and then suddenly reading about Istanbul and the serpent column from Apollo's temple uh, in Delphi. So um, next entry, 10 2020 I am at the bus station in Athens waiting on my bus to Delphi that comes at 3 p.m. I was a little torn this morning about whether or not I should cancel my reservation. I decided to meditate on the decision in order to gain clarity. As I finally reached a point of calm, the conviction came over me. It is time. Time to go to Delphi. Time to meet your God, for there he is waiting. So here I am waiting on my bus to Delphi. 
honestly, I'm a bit fearful, as I feel is absolutely natural when one, first of all, does not know what to expect. I'm also afraid that I won't find anything there or that maybe I'll be disappointed. I'm afraid of losing myself in the experience, in the ecstasy. But all of these really are minor fears. The gods and my most gracious Lord Apollo have led me and taken care of me thus far. I must continue to trust and have faith that what is to come at Delphi will be no different, that it will be the experience that I most need it to be, that it will be transformative and good. I feel in my gut that this is where it's all been leading, that everything I have thought and done and experienced and learned up to this point has been in preparation to meet Apollo at Delphi. And so I go, knowing that I will know what to do when it is time. So I definitely had my fears and I feel like that, at least for me, a lot, there's always this sort of battle between my intellect and my intuition and feelings. And over time, it's been a journey for me to learn how to trust those subtle gut feelings that I have about things. And so often I find myself getting decent, strong, intuitive feelings that I need to move but then I start overthinking them and my fears start creeping up. And that's what that moment was all about. Like all of the what ifs, all of the doubts came up. But in my gut, when I calmed myself and meditated and trusted myself, then I, I knew what the right course of action was. And that was to move forward, as it usually is. So the next day, 10-5-2020, I keep saying 2020, but it was really 2014. Um, I sit before Apollo's altar at his temple at Delphi. As soon as I passed around the front of his temple to the side, I came upon this beautiful little golden kitten. He regarded me for a second, then began to run toward me, meowing excitedly. I knelt down to pet him, and as he looked up into my eyes, I noticed that one of his eyes was a darker shade of gold than the other. Apollo? He very quickly jumped into my lap snuggling up next to my stomach and purring happily. I immediately began to consider how I might take him with me. So after that part, um, I guess I didn't really know what had happened. Like it was only kind of in retrospect that I really started kind of getting the full sense of the experience with the kitten. Um, it, it was so, it was just so strange. Um, so out of place in a way. Um, all of this other stuff is going on around me, all these other people. Um, and all of a sudden, it's like the world centered around this one little being that was that was all of a sudden staring right at me, and I was staring right at him. It was like long-lost reunion kind of vibe going on. So I continue, and I say, um, so after seeing, or rather in the process of seeing the rest of the site of, a temple's, of Apollo's temple at Delphi, it finally occurred to me that the meeting the kitten turned out the meeting with the kitten turned out to be my meeting with Apollo, and it was one of love and acceptance. When I look back, I realize how otherworldly he, the kitten, appeared. It was like he was glowing. His outer hair was a deep golden brown, while his inner coat was a bright orangey gold. It was as if a soft golden light was pouring out of him, and his eyes one a light golden, the other a deep, almost crimson gold. And as I rounded the corner of the altar, he was sitting on a stone of the temple across the rope with his back turned to me. I stopped and regarded him silently for a moment, thinking, how lucky for the cats that they can walk the sacred temple with impunity. He then noticed me and turned, rising and running toward me urgently. He stopped purring loudly and looked up into my eyes imploringly. I knelt to him, and he jumped into my lap, offering nothing but love and acceptance. I realize now that I have just met my God and received his love and acceptance, his blessing. And so the whole experience was more subtle than I expected and was more weighted with meeting and sensation and experience than I expected. And, you know, so easily we forget that in many ways witchcraft is an experience or religion that are interludes with deity and powers 
are very difficult to describe because what is happening is more subtle than words can convey. And so when I met the kitten, it had this texture that was more real than real. Um, the whole experience conveyed feelings and sensations that were beyond the pale, that were beyond... It's as if the whole moment of that experience was encoded deeply and richly with meaning, which gave it this texture that was more poignant and real than how we often experience the moments that we go through in life. Ultimately, I think that mystical uh, experience is available in every moment and that there are also moments that stand out as undeniably so undeniably laden with deep mystical meaning and for me this was one of them um, yeah that that's about all I can say of, of the experience uh, without feeling like I'm just repeating myself so well, I hope you have enjoyed this video and this experience. Um, I would love your comments. And if you would like, DM me um, or email me. Um, I am also on Instagram as dark.winter.moon. And my email address is uh, darkwintermoon8 at gmail.com. I'll put those in uh, the comments below. Um, and as always, I would love your likes, your subscribes, um, and your comments. Blessed be.